And we're back, folks, with another edition of Inside Michigan Recruiting. We take you inside the top prospects that make their way to the University of Michigan campus. We've done two or three so far. It's going to keep going throughout the spring and into the summer and, of course, into the fall. And right now, if you look at how Michigan has been going on the recruiting trail, you'll notice there have been a lot of offensive prospects. That's because it took a little while for the defensive prospects or defensive coaches to get on board. But once they did, they prioritized getting a few guys on campus right away. A couple of them are with us today, starting off first, one of the top safeties in the country from a school that you might be familiar with. You remember names like Doug Dutch from back in the day, Evan Link on the team right now. They came from a school in D.C. called Gonzaga, and their top prospect, one of the top safety prospects in the country is with us right now, Kanoa Winston. Kanoa, how you doing? Good, good. Loving it up here so far, Michigan. Yeah, yeah man. Glad that you can make it up here with us. Before we get into talking about recruiting, let's just go back and talk about you on the high school football field and track, by the way, yeah. and talk about how things went for you on your high school scene last season. High school scene last season, you know, sophomore year last year, I was just getting making the front, the jump from freshman year to sophomore year, just getting to learn more and more, getting more built, more physical, more faster. That doing football and track helped me a lot. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you come from a, a school that is perennially one of the top schools on the East Coast, not just in the DMV, yes. but on the whole East Coast. So what was that transition like for you stepping into such a prestigious program? Okay, Zaga, it's school and football. So, you know, going from middle school to just – you go to middle school, go to work, and then you got football on the side. And then going mm -hmm. to high school, it's all on one. And then Gonzaga, it's a hard school. A lot of good people there, good students, good teachers. And then you got to get your homework done. got to get, get P's and Q's. got to get your work done there. And then football, too. One of the hardest conferences in America, WCAC. Mm -hmm. So just hard on hard, school and football. But it make you a man. So your freshman year, did you did you get much run? Did you register very much? Did you make very much noise on the football field your freshman year? I played a little bit towards the end of my season. I started my last game. The playoff game I started, and then halfway through the season, I started getting little reps here and there, just throwing me in the game. You yeah. know, young one. Yeah, I was at the uh, at the game that you guys played against uh, Nick Harbour and them. Yeah. The at the early part of that season, I remember the atmosphere at that in that game being really, really big time. All kinds of attention on that game, and so you got a feel for DMV football and how many good prospects there were in the DMV. And so, what about that when you see you know top guys kind of come through? And realize that man, this is this is where people think think about DMV a lot for basketball, but football has obviously been a huge, huge deal as well. Yeah, I know. You think DMV, you think basketball, but football, you can't skip out on the football. Got good prospects everywhere. WCAC, even in some of the four A schools in Maryland, some of the Virginia schools, everywhere. The DMV, you know, for football and basketball. So you mentioned track. That's another thing that really stands out about the DMV too, right? So you've seen, we've seen, I mentioned Nick Harbor guys who have starred on the gridiron and on, on the track, and you do that yourself. So take me through your, your track exploits, your expertise there. How's that been going for you? I've been running track since I was young, like 10, 11 years old. So I kind of build up my way, and I know I do it in high school. But track, I just do it, get myself staying at the school. And if you're not going to football, you go to track. You keep yeah. myself in shape because I don't want to be out of shape working out. But just use track for to help me out in football, too, get faster and cover okay. the field. So is, is track an interest of yours beyond high school or is it, is it strictly just about preparing you for football? I mean, a little bit of both. I mean, if the right opportunity come, I might run it in college, but mm -hmm. it's strictly football. I'm strictly football. Football I first. You. I got you. All right, so in track, though, what events? What are your events that you have? One, two, four by one, four by two. All right. And Anything so, under the 400. Okay, really. so your fastest 100 meter, fastest 200 meter, what? Fastest 100 right now is like a 10.6. Okay. And fastest 200 is 21.5. Wow, and that was just that's just from yeah, last year. Yeah. Last year as a sophomore. I, I got you. Keep dropping them times this year. I got you. All right, so let's go into recruiting now. Yeah. Obviously, you've been one of the top prospects in the country for some time. You got schools that have been hawking you for some time, but then Michigan, they've had a major transition defensively. They had success on the football field, but the coaching staff has changed. Where was Michigan with you before the coaching change? Was it a situation where they kind of fell off your list and now they're coming back on? Where would you say things kind of stand with them? Michigan always been hard for me. You know, national champions, they doing something good for a reason. You know, national champions. And then I know they had a little coaching change. I kind of messed it up a little bit, but they still haven't dropped off. Mm -hmm. I still like them, Michigan. Got you. All right, so new defensive backs coach, Lamar Morgan. Uh, I imagine this has been a, a contact of yours 
over the phone until now. What have been your impressions of him now that you've gotten a chance to meet him in person? I like him. I like him as a coach. You know, his resume, his resume real strong. And uh, he real laid back, but he's a good coach. And uh, he's been working with some of the defense. I know he said he worked with Coach Minner sometime in the previous. And uh, mm -hmm. Coach Minner, he in the NFL now. So just a resume he built up. And then now he's here. That's good. You know, one of the things I always ask prospects when they go on campus is that like you, you try to evaluate coaching style. Like what kind of coaching style do you respond to? There are some coaches that like to get kind of get yeah. in your behind a little bit. And there are other coaches that are more pat you on the back. Is there a particular coaching style that you react better to than another? I mean, a little bit of both. You know, you don't want a coach that'd be hard, hard, hard. And at the end of the day, they just don't really care about you. They just want to win football games. But you also want a coach that care about you outside of life. So mm -hmm. a little bit of both, you know, like tough love. Mm -hmm. Just get on you the football field. But at the end of the day, it's for your own benefit. Make you a better person, a better football player. So did you get a feel for it? You got a chance to watch practice? No, not, I watch them ball tomorrow. Okay. All right. So thus far, your impressions of the scheme that Michigan has. I mean, they've had, you got Will Johnson, who is obviously an All-American already, but Mikey St. Ristol. Uh, who's been safety, who's been nickel, who's been corner. I'm curious, is there an aspect? They list you as a safety, but you seem versatile enough to play corner or nickel. Do you have a preference of where you line up? No, I like their defense. I like their defense they ran last year. I remember I was saying that they had they run a 4-2-5 with a nickel. I like that type of defense. They're playing a lot of DBs on the back end, moving them around. Mm -hmm. I just like that mm -hmm. versatility. So now are different schools talking to you? Is it is it safety? Is it free? I mean, are, are all of them talking to you about just strictly safety? Or nickel, or is anyone talking to you about maybe playing corner? I mean, a little bit of both. Some see me as a DB. Some see me as that, like, free safety, strong safety, mm -hmm. nickel. Like a little rover, like gadget guy. All right, so I want you to I want to take you outside your box a little bit and have you give me a scouting report. You don't have to worry about it be, coming across as being boastful. I want you to give me an honest assessment that Kanoa wins to pretend you're a coach or a scout in the stands watching yourself on the football field. Tell me what you see, break down your game. I'll say just what I say every time, fast and physical. You know, I can cover all the back end. I like playing both free, like free and strong. But then I can, like, a free move around the back end, strong in the box a little bit. And then physical, a little wood, you know. Okay. I just like hitting. Okay. Yeah. Is there a player in college or the pros that you compare yourself to or try to emulate? i say Buddha Baker. Okay. Yeah. Like, same size, same playing technique. One of the things, you know, it's, it's hard to really tell from a highlight, but you can you can kind of glean some things, and it really feels like you're kind of a quarterback on the back end, that you think the game as well as you play the game. Is that an accurate assessment of how you approach? Yeah, I think that's how safety is supposed to be played. Safety kind of the quarterback of the defense, see everybody, see how the play break down, see all the route concepts, see all the run blocks and all that. You just got to be you, – you're the last line of defense at the end of the day, so you got to make sure they don't score. You got to make sure they don't get past you. Mm -hmm. So you kind of got to be the quarterback of the defense to do that. Okay. All right, so you got a chance to get a feel for Michigan scheme. You talked about uh, Lamar Morgan a bit. What about uh, Coach Wink Martindale? I mean, I wonder, do you have any familiarity with him from his time coaching the Ravens at all? Did you – did you are you a Ravens fan by any chance? I mean, who do you, who do you root for? And then what do you think about Coach Martindale? Uh, I don't got a favorite football team, but I see him coach DC for, for the Ravens. You know, he real. If you don't really know him, you think he real like a strict guy, like just like oh, uh, just like <laughs> one of them. But he a good coach. He a good coach. I like him. All right. So what about Coach Moore? What were your impressions of Coach Moore? Coach Moore, he real laid back. I like him. You know, you see him on TV, you think he all like yo yo yo, but he real laid back, chill. You know, he a likable guy. Your time on campus, I know you gotta take in practice and a lot of guys hey that that tends to be one of the major things that stands out but other than a practice what have been the things on this visit to michigan that have kind of stood out to you the most campus is beautiful facilities everything campus you know we got toured around there a little bit all the different streets and all that and you know we got the big house you got everybody here like michigan football that's what they love that's their thing and then there's different packed facilities all that the strength conditioning nutrition academics all that one of the best academics here you know Going to Gonzaga, well, that was really one of my main, like, why I went there for academics. And here, good academics, great football, great academics. Mm -hmm. Yeah, oh, it got every, everything here. All right, all right. So you, you got a chance to, to, you know, get with the coaches. You get a chance to interact with any of the players at all since you've been here? Yeah, I with Quinn Johnson the other day, or yesterday, really. Okay. I had dinner with him, talked to him a little bit. He's from the DMV, too, right. so the DMV pipeline coming here. And then Link, obviously, he came. Say what's up to him earlier. He would go to my school. Right. He left my sophomore year, freshman year. Okay. Sophomore, so. Did you know him very well during your time there? Yeah, I mean, yeah, he was my teammate. Yeah, he played guard. I played safety. Right. So. Yeah, that's why I was asking. Yeah. Like, you know, that 
don't really mingle in the same circles yeah, on the field, I'll, right? A little bit. You know, I was on scout team helping him out okay. when he was playing. So that was. So what about Q? I mean, Quentin was was obviously a standout safety in his own right from the DMV when he came out. What does he what did he say to you about his Michigan experience? What kind of stands out to you about your conversation with him? He just kept it real. Like he just kept it real throughout the whole conversation, just talking about Michigan football, talking about here, talking about like the culture they built there. He just kept it real. That's why everything, everybody here that I talk to, they just, that's what I like about him. They keep it real. Mm -hmm. Keep it how it is. So, Kanoa, you this is your first time to Michigan, but you've yeah. been on a number of visits before and you I keep it real with you, a lot of people they were focused on Penn State from the very beginning because KJ is there, right? Yeah. So I, I know you've heard that a lot. How big of a factor is that in your overall thought process as far as your recruitment is concerned? I mean, it was really the same thing coming out of high school. You know, he went to DeMatha and then, you know, people think I would go there because my cousin did. I know obviously at the end of the day, it's family. Mm -hmm. like that, we can share the same blood. But at the end of the day, it's really my decision where I want to go, where I feel like I would fit. Mm -hmm. so, I mean, obviously he go there. He's been telling me good things about Penn State. But at the end of the day, it's my decision. Mm -hmm. So, you know, they've had some turnover coaching-wise there, too, yeah. which Coach Diaz going over to, to do. Did that change anything? Like, what have been your impressions of the of the defense and the defensive staff now in the aftermath of, of Coach Diaz leaving? I mean, they really showed me the same attention. You know, they said they're going to run the same scheme, same type of scheme that Coach Diaz ran. And then they said, yeah, basically they run the same scheme. And then Coach Dex still there, so I like him. All right, so hear a, lot, hear a lot about North Carolina. I know you've been there a number of times, very high uh, on the Tar Heels list as well. Give me your impressions of, of the North Carolina program. I like North Carolina. They've been showing me love ever since they offered me. You know, they're trying to keep me, keep me down there, keep me busy down there. Uh, I like the campus, I like the football there. I like Coach Warren, I like Coach Brown. I like the love they've been showing me. Real hospitality down there. Okay. All right, so got to ask you about the Buckeyes. You know, the, the Buckeyes kind of kind of show love as well. So what have been your impressions of Ohio State? I like them. They real, you know, they slowly develop here. I like that. I like, I really just like Ohio State. I like how they, like, winning, 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 winning. Mm -hmm. So, so um, I'm curious from your perspective when you go to these campuses, whether when you go to Michigan uh, and or when you go to Ohio State, can you feel the right, I mean, there are aspects of the rivalry that become evident to you. Do, do they mention the other school? Do you notice how the intensity of the rivalry, even on a visit, does that show up in any kind of way? Yeah, you know, down there they call up here the team up north. <laughs> and then we they were talking to Coach Moore earlier, they call them just a the team down south. And then, you know, they've been talking about like cross out the M's and then up in the offices they got the Ohio State logo and it's like crossed out. So you can definitely feel the rivalry. <laughs> yeah. So uh as you there's so many schools that are on your list. I, I'm curious, have you gotten to the point where you started thinking about narrowing things. I know you have some officials, but have you officially narrowed down your list yet? I mean, a little bit. You know, I got schools that keep hitting me up. Keep like I keep talking to them, and then some of them, some schools, just nah, not really. Mm -hmm. But I got like a cool like list. So you you have what three officials set now? Three. I'm about to schedule one here first week in June. First week in June. So Michigan is officially locked in for an official visit. Now. Yes. All right. So and then that leaves one that's still open. Like how many? How many haven't you? How many are you gonna take at the end of the day? Probably four. You gonna just yeah. take the four? Yeah. All four right. Weekends. So as you get deeper into the into the process, Kanoa, I'm curious. Have you started to think about what the biggest criteria is gonna be in your final decision? Like what are gonna be the most significant factors in your choice when you make it? So like I say, development and then how they treat my family. At the end of the day, they making they making a decision with me. Mm -hmm. I know it's just me playing football, but they coming with me too. Mm -hmm. And the development, just developing me as a man, as a player, just make me better as a whole individual. So how do you assess, the, you said development, how do you assess that? I mean, are you just looking at how many guys from your position are in the pros? Are you looking at specific techniques in practice? Like, how do you assess development? I mean, yeah, I mean, putting people in the pros and then, just building up, like being more mature, going to high school to college and then being a man, just getting you ready for adulthood. And then if you make it to the pros, just making sure that you got all the right techniques and all that, just making sure that you're just a better person, better player, better mm -hmm. person. You you think about distance from home? I mean, there are certain, there's some schools uh, on your list that are closer to home than, than others. Does that factor into your thought process at all? I mean, yeah, but not really. I mean, at the end of the day, it's football is a business. You, know, mm -hmm. you got to take risk of your life. Mm -hmm. So that distance, I mean, you can just watch the game on TV. I, mean, yeah. I hear that. <laughs> I hear that. So you, you also mentioned development. What about 
you talk about development and academics. You see how you can measure those. What about strength and conditioning? Are you evaluating that aspect of things too, strength and conditioning and nutrition? Because I heard you mention that earlier. Yeah, I value everything, but I say development and how they treat the players is like the top. But everything matters in the college decisions. You know, they say one of the most mm -hmm. like impactful decisions of life. So I got you. So your pops. I mean, you know, no one goes through this process by themselves, right? I mean, you got to be taking insight and gleaning advice uh, from someone. So give me the 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 thing that he kind of pushes the most, stresses the most in this recruiting process that you evaluate, that you take into account as you're going through it. Just he what he tell what he preaches me a lot is where you go go where you want it, not or go where you need it, not where you want it. Mm. So that you know, you filter out some of the schools that, eh, we just want you to come here so nobody else, so you don't go to another school. And then some schools really like, you need to, like, we want you here. We need you here. So you said you go where you need it. Yeah. How do you, how do you figure that out? Are you just, is that just a depth chart thing? Like, how are you figuring that out? I mean, not really a depth chart thing. Just like coaches, like, you know, how the way communicate. Some, you, you can tell, like, they send like, like mass like messages and some of them really personalized like yeah we need you here this and that this and that mm -hmm. and then just you can you can kind of filter that out early mm -hmm. just see where you need it not where you want it yeah man i was going to ask you that it's funny that you mentioned because you know when you're a prospect like yourself we're going to be talking to elijah melendez earlier you guys are two of the top prospects in the country all these coaches are going to be hitting you with messages all of them going to have really good campuses really good facilities yeah. right they're pretty comparable in those respects. So when you're matching them up, how do you separate one from the other? Especially when it comes to like the relationship piece of it, when you clearly are vibing with all of them, how do you kind of separate one from the other? I mean, just how the quality of football they play and just how many people they put in the league, really. You know, you mm -hmm. got a good coach, a good team, good head coach, good staff around you. It takes an army to make you a man. So mm -hmm. that's how I really evaluate. So you got four officials set. Do you have a timeline for when you like to make a decision? Probably June, July. So before your senior season? Yeah, before my season. Okay, all right. Yeah. And so now how how are you going to come to it? Like you, you gave me what you're going to look at. I'm always interested in figuring out how a guy, come, what his deliberation process is like. Some some guys sit at the table with their, 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 their circle, their family, their coaches. Others are like they get the input from... The people in their circle, then it's like, okay, I gotta go. It's me, myself, and I. I gotta go make the decision on my own. Have you thought about how you're gonna do it? I mean, obviously, I gotta talk to my family about it. I probably take take some officials, but one of them jump out with me, and I really like it. Me, and my family like it. I commit, but really, just me and my family gotta sit down and talk about it. Close family, just talk about what's best for me mm -hmm. going to college. So you uh, basically are almost through your first Michigan visit. Uh, I'm curious as you move towards the end what are the maybe the biggest questions you have about michigan as this visit closes out and what is what are the things that you would say you like most about michigan at this point i don't think i got any questions you know to me through the whole ringer all the meetings and all that i like i like it here i i enjoyed it here we got a little academic tour a little strength and conditioning the coaches meeting and we got practice tomorrow so mm -hmm. really ain't nothing we didn't do here i like to hear the little first visit and we'll come back later okay all right and so, I mean, you know, this is one of the one of the things that comes up all the time as you're looking at a new era of college athletics is yeah. the NIL presentations. And so, you know, all of these schools have have some track record for how their how their players do in that area of things. How are you handling that part of the decision? Is that something that you look at? Is that something that you rely on your parents to to kind of look at? How are you sort of handling that piece? You know, it's so new that me and my parents, especially my parents and I, like both of us, all three of us, we don't really know how all that works. So, you know, they talk about money, you know, like all the like dealerships and the, like the brand deals and all that. Mm -hmm. End of the day, just, I just want to play football. You know, all the NIL come with it. Of course, it's like a major part mm -hmm. in college football. But at the end of the day, I come, with, I come to school for football, school, that money come, like right. money comes after. I got you. So look ahead to next season. I mean, clearly getting this out of the way before the start of your senior campaign is – going to clear the deck so you can just focus on that. Yes. Kind of give me an idea of what the outlook is for your last ride, so to speak. Try to win it all next year. Got to win it all. That's been the year, or that's been a goal all through my years. But, you know, senior year time running out like this. All right. So that it's a certain urgency you have to have as a senior. I'm trying to win it all. Put extra work in. I know me and my team doing an excellent job of that. Trying to 
get it out this year. I got you. So before you get on officials, you got any more unofficials that you're going to be taking? Probably after this, no. Probably not. After this. And so then it's just focus on track? Yeah, track and then football workouts. Okay, yeah, man, because, you know, we want to try to get out and see you on the on the track and field circuit as well. So, I mean, you got any big meets we can kind of point towards? Big meets. We got the state meets at the end, end of May. Okay. End of May, we got state meets. Okay. DCs and then WCACs. Okay. All right, my last one. I always like to uh, – another question that kind of takes guys out their box a little bit. You're ho- you heard every recruiting pitch out there at this point. Every All these big-time schools are coming at you. Pretend you're the coach and you're recruiting you. You know what doesn't work. You know what does work. How would you recruit you? What would you do? What would you stress and emphasize as you're recruiting you down the stretch? I probably just stress relationships and then – not really so much for the football side, but like as a man, like how I say it, as a man, you got you got to recruit the player and the family. You got to recruit all of them. Just relationship, relationship, relationship. Because at the end of the day, it's more than just coaching them and then going home, going your separate ways. You got like coaches, you got to coach them, and then really like that should be like your son, like your teammate, but then your son at the same time. Like you coaching them at the same time, that's what should be family for you. Gotcha. Canola Winston, man, appreciate your time. Appreciate you. All right. That'll do it for this edition of Inside Michigan Recruiting, talking to Kanoa Winston. If you keep track of us on the YouTube page, you'll see more of these interviews as we get closer to uh, the resumption of the uh, Michigan Recruiting Insider. Of course, we have Steady Dropping Dimes every week as well. You can check those out, those out every Wednesday at 6 p.m. for Devin Gardner and Daniel Horton. And then, of course, all the recruiting information and intel that you can want over on the MichiganInsider.com, over on 24-7 Sports. Be sure to check it out. Until next time, we'll see you on the next edition of Inside Michigan Recruiting.